I'll be doing that. And let me just make this full screen so you have a better, better view here. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining. My name is Jesse Marsh. I'm the principal and manager of Scaling Blue, which is an independent consultancy. Um, I've been consulting for about four years now. Uh, for those of you who I don't know, I uh, previously worked with World Wildlife Fund in the US and um, have about 10 years total of experience in FIPS and was lucky enough to collaborate with uh, many different WWF offices around the world to help develop FIPS. So I'm really excited to be talking with all of you today about the FIP community of practice. Um, it will be a short presentation, so there'll be plenty of time for questions at the end. And feel free to either ask questions or you can type them into the chat box, whichever you prefer. So just to get us started, I wanted to share a definition of what a community of practice is. Um, so it's essentially a group of people who share a concern or a passion for something they do. So in this case, FIPS, and learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. So the community of practice is really just a way for um, different FIP implementers around the world to connect with each other, learn more about what each other are doing, and then hopefully use those lessons learned to then go back and apply to their own work on fishery improvement projects. So the objective of the community of practice is really focused on sharing knowledge and experiences within the FIP community with the overall goal of increasing the impact and effectiveness of FIPS. There are many different types of stakeholders who are members of the FIP community of practice. Um, so this includes industry, NGOs, government, um, fishermen, academics, et cetera, anyone who's implementing FIPS globally. And the community of practice connects a couple of different ways. So um, virtually through Podio, which is an online communications platform, and I you can see many of you are already a part of Podia. Uh, and then also in person at regional workshops. And I'll talk a bit more about those workshops and Podio uh, for most of the presentation. But what I wanted to do before diving into those details is just to provide a bit of an overview of the infrastructure that's behind the community of practice. So within the global FIP community of practice, there are two formal regional communities of practice. So one in the Asia Pacific region, one in Latin America. I serve as the global coordinator for the community. And as of August of 2018, we have um, Antonio Gomez, who has been serving as the regional community coordinator for Latin America, as well as for Mexico. So we don't currently have a community coordinator for the Asia Pacific region at this point, um, but we will be reaching out to community members at uh, one of the in-person workshops next year to see if they think that this would be a valuable um, resource or valuable role also for the Asia Pacific community. So in addition to these regional communities, um, we also have a couple of country and species specific communities. And I have these in dash lines because these are really supported primarily through having a workspace on Podio, and I'll talk about those um, later in the presentation as well. Um, but again, most of the focus to date has really been on these regional communities to bring together different FIP stakeholders working on FIPS in these specific regions. So in addition to myself and Antonio, uh, there's a global advisory committee which provides strategic guidance to us around how to most effectively support the community of practice. Uh, and Thai Union is an ad hoc participant in the advisory committee, which is why they have an asterisk next to their name. Uh, there's also a podio steering committee and they provide feedback and guidance on how to make the podio workspaces as effective as possible. And then for each of the regions, there are workshop steering committees, which play an essential role in designing the in-person workshops that have been held in those regions. And the workshop steering committees are made up of FIP implementers in those specific regions. So just to give a little bit of background or history as to when all of this work started. Um, so the community of practice first began uh, in 2016 with the organization of three regional workshops. 
Um, so we held one for Central America, Mexico, and the Caribbean, a separate one for South America, and then a third for South and Southeast Asia. And we picked these regions um, based on the number of FIPS that were in development or being implemented in these regions. And there are a number of different types of stakeholders who attended, um, ranging from NGOs, industry, government. I think uh, the first year we held these workshops, we did not have any fishermen attend, but we did um, have them attend our workshop last year, which I'll also talk more about. Um, so part of the rationale for starting this community of practice and organizing these workshops was to bring together um, different FIP implementers and FIP stakeholders working in the region to help encourage cross communication, cross learning across organizations and across countries. Um, this was really the first time that this type of workshop had been organized to really bring together um, different types of people who are working on FIPS and provide an opportunity for them just to learn from each other about what they were doing. Um, and one other thing to note is that uh, the FIPS stakeholders that attend these meetings, they are a mix of stakeholders who have a lot of FIP experience and, and then others that are newer to the space. So there is a good mix of different levels of expertise and knowledge related to FIPS at the in-person workshops. So there are three main objectives that we were focused on, uh, these in-person workshops in 2016. And these are also relevant for uh, the workshop that we held last year, as, the, as well as the workshops that we're planning uh, next year for 2019. Uh, but the first is to increase collaboration among FIP implementers by building and strengthening relationships across organizations. The second is to share lessons learned, successes, and challenges across FIPs. And the third is to sustain a community of practice by creating a forum for FIP implementers to engage with one another with a focus on information exchange and learning. Uh, so the, the community of practice is not a training, so it is a bit of a capacity building experience in that um, FIP stakeholders are learning about different approaches that have worked or not worked in other FIPs, but it's not um, a formal training per se. So last year we held one community of practice workshop, um, primarily because we had funding for one workshop as opposed to three as we did in 2016. Uh, and we did hold a, a Latin America regional workshop in Viña del Mar in Chile. And so last year we had combined uh, the regions that we'd held in 2016. So we combined um, the Central America, Mexico, Caribbean, South America into one Latin America regional workshop. And we'll be doing that uh, moving forward as well. So I wanted to share just a little bit of information or details about the workshop from last year, just to give you a picture of sort of who was there and what we talked about. Um, but we had about 70 participants from different sectors representing 11 different countries in Latin America. It was primarily attended by NGOs as well as industry and government. And it was great to see um, several fishermen from FIPS in Mexico that were able to attend as well. Then we also had a number of uh, regional FIP consultants as well as research scientists or academics that were able to attend. So this is just a snapshot of the agenda topics that we discussed at the workshop. Um, the workshop is a, it's a, the format is a mix of panel sessions, presentations, small group discussions, as well as larger group discussions. So we really try and keep it as engaging as possible and wanting to make sure it's not just a series of PowerPoint presentations to sit through. Um, and we'll also be um, soliciting ideas for panel sessions and presentations for participants for the 2019 workshops as well, so that we help ensure that the agenda and the content is really driven by the community. So after each of the workshops, we do a post-workshop survey to get feedback from participants. Um, we were really happy to see that um, the overall rating for the workshop in terms of the value of the workshop to participants' work on FIPS um, was quite high at 4.8 on a scale of 1 to 5. So we we're really happy um, with those results. And as part of the, the post-workshop survey, we also ask a lot of 
um, fairly detailed questions in terms of looking to get feedback on specific sessions that were held throughout the workshop, um, wanting to get positive, negative feedback on each day, timing wise, how was the food, how was the venue, the facilitator, all of that. Um, and that feedback is really important because that helps us improve future workshops and helps us design a better workshop for everyone uh, moving forward. So as I mentioned, we'll be organizing uh, a couple of workshops in 2019. So there'll be one in Latin America and one in Asia Pacific. And those will be held um, towards the end of 2019. So the Latin America workshop will be in Peru and the Asia Pacific workshop will be in Bali, Indonesia. The purpose and participants are fairly similar to the 2016 and 2017 workshops. Um, so again, really an opportunity just to to share lessons learned and connect with each other, um, identify potential collaboration opportunities, et cetera. And uh, we will be finalizing the agenda in early 2019, just to you know, give people as much information as early as possible uh, to help them make a decision about whether or not to attend the workshop. And we will also be opening workshop registration in January. So I also just wanted to share some of the likely key topics that will be discussed the workshops in 2019. Um, so these are likely key topics because these are still being discussed with the various workshop steering committees. And then when participants register to attend the workshops, they'll also have an opportunity to share their priorities about which topics they are most interested in. And that will help us um, better define the workshop agenda and which topics that we'll spend the most time on. So the first is policy engagement and change and looking at the role that government is playing in FIPS in the region. Second is FIP impacts and on the water change. So wanting to share examples of conservation results and impacts that have been achieved as a result of a FIP as well as fishery management changes that may have been implemented. FIPS and small scale and artisanal fisheries. So what are the, the challenge and, challenges and opportunities specifically around um, developing, developing and implementing FIPS in these types of fisheries? Markets perspective. Uh, so talk a bit about market demand for FIPS, how to effectively engage industry in FIPS. And we've also gotten some questions around an interest in hearing about examples of bottom-up artisanal FIPS and whether or not they're able to access market benefits. Innovation in FIPS, so what new tools or approaches are being used. Effective stakeholder engagement, so wanting to hear from different FIPS around how they've engaged different stakeholders, for example, fishing communities or government and their FIPS. FIPS and social issues, um, so how social indicators are being incorporated into FIPS and whether or not there have been any social benefits as a result of FIPS. Um, this one was, uh, this has been suggested, I think, as feed after feedback from the 2016 workshop, but um, there's been a lot of interest in also wanting to learn about what doesn't work. So what are some FIP failures that FIP stakeholders would be willing to share? Uh, and also what would they have done differently to try and address those challenges? And then the last one is traceability in FIP supply chains, um, where we're looking to hopefully hear examples of traceability solutions that are being used in FIP supply chains. So those um, specific topics that I just ran through, those are the ones where we will be soliciting ideas for panel sessions and presentations from participants. And then in addition to those topics, um, there will be several other topics covered as well. So the first is a FIPS 101 training session. And this will be a half day or a full day, depending on which workshop it is. A session on measuring the impact of FIPS, so looking at monitoring and evaluation. A bit of a training on fisheryprogress.org. A workshop type session on FIP funding and budgeting, as well as a session on the FIP community of practice. So moving on to Podio. Uh, so this is the internal communications platform for the FIP community. It's really a space for stakeholders to share information, ask questions. Uh, there's been information posted around you know, opportunities to join webinars, 
um, funding opportunities as well. And so, so far, the people who are on Podio are those who have either attended a past workshop or been invited to attend a past workshop, or they've just requested to be part of Podio. And we are continuing active outreach to FIP stakeholders so that as any FIP stakeholder who's interested in being part of Podio can be added to the space. Um, so I also want to walk through some of the different workspaces that are on Podio. I'm not going to do a live demo because I tried that on the webinar yesterday. It was very slow. So I just have some screenshots to walk you through after this slide. Um, but there are multiple different workspaces that have been set up. So the All FIPS Community News workspace is where everyone who's a part of the global FIP community of practice who's on Podio is all connected in that one space. There are also two regional workspaces, one for Asia Pacific, one for Latin America. There are numerous country specific and species specific workspaces, as well as a couple of workspaces that are more focused on specific issues. Uh, and so one thing to note here is that with the exception of the regional workspaces, I think all of these other workspaces were suggestions that came from within the community of the types of workspaces that they thought would be most useful for them. And so I'd encourage um, anyone who has additional suggestions for workspaces that you think would be valuable, feel free to shoot me an email or let me know. Uh, and then if there are FIP stakeholders who are working on FIPS that are not in Asia Pacific or not in Latin America, if you think it would be valuable to also have um, more regional spaces that are more relevant for your work, definitely please let me know as well. So I just wanted to, to give a couple of examples of some of the types of information that have been shared. So there are a number of different apps. You can see those at the top of the screen. Uh, so this is the document library. There are a number of different types of documents that have been added here. So there's a webinar proposal form for anyone who has an idea of a webinar that they would like to present to the community just to complete that form. Um, I added a presentation from a, a session at the Boston Seafood Show last year. The, all of the workshop reports from past regional workshops are available. Um, WWF has added their Spanish guidelines on how to develop FIPS here as well. So these are just a couple of examples, again, of the types of information that are accessible through Podium. We also created a FIP list, which allows you to see which community members are connected to which FIPs. Um, so you can see the FIP name, the species, who's connected. It also shows whether or not the FIP is prospective, so in stages zero to one, or whether it's an active FIP and in stages two to five. And then there's also a, a place to include a link to publicly available information. We also have an app for webinar recordings. Um, so we try and record all the webinars that we give that are relevant for the community of practice and add them here for folks who aren't able to join the live version of the webinar. Uh, and we also have um, Podio 101 webinars in both English and Spanish um, for folks who are new to Podio and would like a virtual tour of, of how it works and the different tools that exist. I think the last one I have here is just the calendar. Um, so this is where we add um, various events. I think all of these except for one are all webinars, and I still need to add the events for the 2019 workshops. But again, I just wanted to provide a bit of an overview of the types of for the type of content that's here and available for FIP stakeholders. And that is all I have on the community of practice. Um, so thank you very much, everyone. Uh, and I'm definitely ready for any questions that folks might have. Does anyone have any questions? I 
And if you also would prefer to just type your question to the chat box, that's fine too. For those of you who are already part of the community of practice, do you have any comments or feedback that you would like to share for, for the other folks on the phone who might be very new to this topic and the community in general? Oh, Jesse, can you yes. hear us? Yes, can I can you? hear you. Thank you. Sorry, um, a little bit of a stumble bum when it comes to uh, go to meeting. This is Cleve no Stewart. Yeah. And I wanted to uh, thank you on behalf of all the attendees, I'm sure, for leading us through this very informative seminar. I'm uh, I'm not only a, a little bit awkward at running uh, computer controls, but I'm somewhat new to the FIP um, uh, procedures and, and community. But I'm impressed by uh, the level of organization and participation that's going on. Um, what would you recommend as the best forum? It, it looks like Podio offers uh, opportunity for this, but uh, ways for us to engage with uh, other NGOs to, to, to hook up with them where we see an opportunity for collaboration. Um, how do we determine who those people are or the key contacts mm -hmm. and how would you recommend that we, we engage them? I mean, I, I, I have some ideas, but just based on what you've shown me, there are uh, some things I haven't thought of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, I mean, I, one of the ways to do that, you could use the Podio workspaces, um, depending on the type of issue that you're looking to collaborate around. Um, and if there are specific organizations that you're more interested in, in getting in touch with, then you could also just utilize their contact information that's also available in Podio to email them directly. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I will say is that this is a bit of a new tool. And so there are some people who don't, well, probably a lot of people who don't log into Podio all the time. Um, so we've definitely tried to encourage people to you know, update the settings so that you receive email notifications if someone sends you a message. Um, but we have seen, for example, in the in the Mexico workspace, there have been you know a lot of different types of information shared there, specifically you know for those NGOs or other organizations that are working on FIPS in Mexico. And so that could be one platform that would be useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, the upcoming um, uh, FIP meeting in, in Lima, I uh, expect that you'll be putting out an announcement uh, about that along with a uh, call for reg registration. But um, obviously it would benefit, and I'm speaking about the groups that we work with, it would benefit the, um, uh, the stakeholders, the key um, people that we work with within the fishing communities uh, to participate and obviously there's there's cost involved um mm -hmm. is there some way i mean what, what would you recommend in terms of um, a balance of the actual uh, fishermen and those of us that are attempting to help them mm -hmm. in terms of participation representation at the at the workshop yeah, so I think at uh, the workshop last year we had, you know, as I mentioned, there were a number of fishermen that attended, I think mostly from Mexico, and they were working on FIPS, I believe, primarily with Kobe. Um, and so there were representatives from a couple of different cooperatives, fishermen representatives from different cooperatives that attended. Um, and so I think there was a pretty good balance there of, you know, because many of the FIPS that Kobe is implementing I believe are all done in partnership with local producers. So there was a great balance there of having both NGO and fishermen represented. represented. Um, and certainly, you know, definitely acknowledge the cost issue. And there will be um, some limited travel support that we can provide through the workshop for participants. Mm -hmm. um, 
last year, I can't remember the percentage off the top of my head of how many people received funding support, um, but there will be some limited funds available to hopefully help um, get different types of stakeholders to be able to attend the workshop. Um, but I think you know, if it's possible, for example, to start writing travel into any potential grants, that's always recommended as well. Um, you know, anything to, to help get additional sort of non-NGO perspectives in the room is always great. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I might be able to suggest a, a couple of other funding sources through the American Fisheries Society and the, right. specifically the Western Division provides travel grants and small project grants that um, this, this particular activity would be eligible. No, I think that would be great. The, um, I don't know if you're um, familiar with the international fisheries section of the American Fisheries Society. I, um, I think there's some opportunity to uh, link up with them and at a minimum disseminate some of this information through their membership, the AFS membership, and reach a very broad audience. Mm -hmm. Just to plant that with you, I, I can help you if, if you uh, want to contact some of the officers. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Cleve. Yeah. Hi, Jesse. This is Sandra Andraka from Costa Rica. Hi, Sandra. Hi. Um, I would like just to add a comment that, yeah, I joined uh, the congratulations. I think I really thanks you know, thank you for all your effort. Uh, and I um, would like to add that I think this community of practice is, a, is an unique opportunity to have a very open and transparent uh, dialogue. Uh, we have the opportunity to participate in both uh, meetings in Latin America and uh, the first one in, in Ecuador and the other um, last year in, in, in Chile, and uh, the fishing sector and the government and the exports uh, from Costa Rica and also uh, fishing authorities from Panama, they participate and they really enjoy, you know, uh, the opportunity to understand better because it's, it's very complex <laughs> to understand the FIPS, you know, if you're not familiar with that and I uh, had the opportunity to exchange uh, experience and lessons learned with other colleagues in the, in the region. So I think it's, it's very important, we have talked about that uh, in, in, in several occasions, uh, to engage the participation of the industry, of the private sector, uh, and, uh, uh, but a lot, you know, of the, also of the fishers, the producers, because I think that they are learning more and more how uh, FIPS could really uh, help, you know, to develop uh, their their fisheries. Uh, they don't see any more like it's something that they don't understand or something that is going to be more a barrier or a problem instead of uh, uh, an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you, Anna. I think uh, that you're really doing a great work. Uh, job and 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 uh, and, uh, and yeah and i want to emphasize that it's really really good opportunity because the the transparent way of talking during the sessions with anything is forbidden you know we what we can talk about we want to talk and there's always a lot of openness you know to to uh share the concerns and uh, and also lessons learned so thanks a lot that's great thanks sandra and i think you know building on your comment and also on please comment i think you know, Part of what I think is so exciting about the community of practice is seeing the exchange that happens across the different types of stakeholders. So um, I think it's great to always look to increase participation from um, producers, industry, government, et cetera, because it really it does seem to be something that's really valuable. So. Any other questions or comments from folks? All right, if there are no questions,
questions. I'll just go back real quick in case you don't have my contact information. Uh, if you think of a question later, uh, feel free to get in touch via email or send me a message on Podio. Um, for all those different workspaces that I showed on Podio, I do have to add people individually. So if, if you see a workspace you're interested in being a part of, um, please just send me a message. I'll, I'm happy to add you to that space. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for joining. And thank you to Fishery Progress for organizing the seminar. And hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Jesse. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.